Aussie shares continue to fall. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Let's have a look at this article written by Rebecca Lee May from news.com.au discussing, well, the stock market hitting a support level and continuing its downward trend. Now, before we go into this, let's jump over to a few, you know, one of my favorite websites, definitely, definitely in the top five is Trading Economics. And we can jump over here and have a look at the S&P ASX 200, which is an index of well, 200 important companies, shall we say, on the stock exchange here in Australia. Now you can see, you can see we reached an all time high just recently. Remember that? And then it just plunged like nothing. You'd, you'd be sad for someone who bought right there, you know, who was just getting in, or maybe someone who got into investment for the first time ever at that point. But we'll jump out to 10 years and you can see, boom, and now we've plunged right down to there and we've jumped back up. And now, you know, is this the question I put to you? Is this a dead cat bounce? Is this a dead cat bounce? We can see further back where we'll go to. No, I need to go to 25 years to see the 2008. I and mean, there you go. There's the GFC. There's the GFC. So we look there, we turn that down. It jumped back up a little bit like it was recovering. And then it went back down even worse. What do you think? I mean, I know there's a whole lot of people that get into the TA and the trading analysis, you know, and I mean, these are just, in some ways, they're, they're natural systems. So I can understand and appreciate how that can be used to anticipate what might happen in the market. Because we're, we're all just, you know, humans, we're emotionally driven, but you don't know what can happen in the news. That's the problem, you know, can a Trump tweet, shoot the market up? Let's have a look at the S&P 500 over in the US because it's off an all time high as well, and trending down. So let's jump back to this article and have a look before we look at a few other things. So the Australian share market has started trading, uh, starting the trade, trading week in the red after a negative lead from Wall Street, and analysts are concerned the downward trend could prevail for some time. So they're worried we could be in a downward trend. So has the pos is the positivity starting to disappear? Is the confidence that people have in the market gone. I mean, we are entering the first recession in 28 years, guys, we are entering the first recession in 28 years, it is going to be a doozy. Private wealth business Ordminate said the US market fall on Friday was the third straight week weekly loss amid uncertainty about progress on fiscal stimulus talks in Washington, whether a vaccine for COVID-19 could indeed be available in early 2021, and what November's presidential election would do to the economy. I mean, that's the thing. It's I'm, I'm tempted to start up a channel just focusing on US news, as well as a secondary one, because this election is gonna be a doozy over there. And it's going to affect the entire world. It always does. The Australian market then racked up its third consecutive trading day of losses with the S&P ASX 200 finishing 0.71% lower at 58.22. And the All Ordinaries Index dropping 0.73 at 6,013. Think Markets Australia analyst Carl Kapalinga said the ASX held up for the first hour or so and then was pretty much one way traffic. The benchmark S&P ASX 200 index had fallen through a key support level of about 5,830, which was quite concerning. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with that in, in trading, there's, there's certain support levels, I mean, at gold, I, I am no expert at this. Would would you argue that we're, we're at a support level here? Is this a support level or is it not long enough? Yeah, you know, and there's certain psychological triggers that, that hit at other points when different buyers are coming in or going out. So the next level isn't until we get to 5,700 and then around 5,560 from there, he said. So if we can't reclaim the, the support level quickly, one would think the days like today are going to be the norm for a while. So he's predicting that we're going to have you know, tough times for a while. How are you positioned in the market, guys? Have you jumped back in or are you looking at other opportunities here? I've, I'm testing. You may notice my voice is slightly different, actually, as I'm recording this. I'm testing some new technology to eliminate background sound. It's from NVIDIA. And right now, I've got a little toddler banging on the door who probably wants wants me to, you know, 
do something, get her a chocolate milk or something, after mummy said no. So let me know in the comments if you can hear it, if you can hear it. He said, there were few highlights in company news, except for a sales update from Harvey Norman, which pointed to continued strong trading conditions for retailers with exposure to electronics and home furnishings. So this is the stimulus spending that is going into the economy. That's going into the economy. I mean, Harvey Norman did well. JB Hi-Fi did well. All the big consumer retailers did well. So we're still positive on that area of the market and would be comfortable to extrapolate JB uh, Harvey Norman's excellent start to financial year 2021 out of stocks like JB Hi-Fi, West Farmers and Nick Scarly, he said. I think you may, uh, I think you want to try and pick these up on any, any pullback. So these are the shares that he's recommending. Harvey Norman's were up 2.06% at $4.44. Now, here's the question. Sure, Harvey Norman, they've done had a bumper year. Sure, some of the other companies have had a bumper year. But, well, in a few days, on the 28th, Job Seeker and Job Keeper by then will all have been at reduced levels. So people's spending cash will be reduced. People are going to get worried. You have the return of, um, what is it? mutual obligation for people on on job seeker and i mean that means there are going to be more people starting to look for work which you haven't haven't needed to and sure i mean i'm i'm confident that most people will get out there and try and look but i can understand why some people were probably holding off just with the way the economy was and what's going to happen if they start looking for work looking for work and you know to consumer confidence if they are saying, sorry, no, you're one of 300, or they don't even hear back, what's going to hit there? So that's, that could be a potential hit to the spending of this, well, to the consumers that are spending in this sector. ANZ fell 1.29% to 1685. Commonwealth Bank gave up 1.35% to $63.50. NAB sank 1.45 to 17.4, and, and Westpac dipped 1.44 to 1640. Rio Tinto weakened. To 99.40, BHP backtracked to 37.35, and Fortescue slip, slipped to 16.20. And here the Aussie dollar was buying 73 cents. Now, if we jump back over here, let's have a look at a few other things. We've got gold that I brought here, and we're sitting at 1912, a traditional store of wealth, and something that, well, a lot of the fans of the channel have invested in as a hedge against the potential hyperinflation or a loss in value of the Australian dollar for those of us over here. Then you also have silver. It's taken a big plunge. It's gone down at $24.70. So, I mean, where's the support level for silver there? Are we going to head back down to here? So TA, TA boys and girls, you let us know there. Maybe I should get uh, get Adams on. He's he's the silver, silver uh, king, isn't he? And then let's have a look at the crypto markets. You've got Bitcoin, it's take it's gone down to ten thousand five hundred and thirty. Ethereum is at three hundred and forty eight dollars. And XRP is at twenty three cents. So I'm frankly I'm a little annoyed at the price of Ethereum being so high because well it means the transaction fees are so expensive, particularly if you move them small stuff or tokens around. But you know, that's just what annoys me. So there we have it, guys. We have the market particularly in the US and Australia has taken a bit of a hit. We've got warnings that this may support levels have been hit and this may be a downward trend. What do you all think? Do you think this is going to be, uh, well, have we finished the dead cat bounce? Are we going to hit back down further? Let us know. And let me know how the sound recording was for this because toddlers are like zombies, guys, and they are trying to bash down that door right there. So we'll see how it goes. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you all in the next episode.